Good morning, friends. Welcome back to the channel. It's Tisha. Today is Monday, December 13th. We are catching up on our Vlogmas videos. Um, as most of you know, I wasn't able to film this weekend. We had some pretty serious storms here in Kentucky. Um, I did share on social media that I was completely fine. Thank you guys so much for thinking of me, knowing that I was from the area. Um, we live near Bowling Green, Kentucky, really close. That's where we both work. And uh, that is where the storm had uh, impacted. And so I don't want to you know, say too much. I'm sure you saw everything on the news, but just keep um, the, you know, the people of Western Kentucky, the people of Bowling Green in your thoughts and prayers. I know a lot of them lost their homes. There's a lot of people staying in the high school, a lot of people still without power, but um, we went two days and let me tell you, your girl is not meant for that life. Um, we, got out and helped, you know, cleaning up yards and stuff. Um, I'll insert a picture here. This was my neighbor's tree that uprooted. So the tornado had come like right down our main like interstate. So I feel like where I live, we were, we got the least effects of it, but the winds that night about one thirty in the morning, our phones went off and uh, we don't have a basement. A lot of people in Kentucky don't have basements. So we were like, where do we, you know, sit that's safe? And we found a spot and we just all chilled, but power had gone off. That's how we woke up because we all were fan sleepers here. So all of our fans went off. So like we all got up before the phones alerted. And then you could hear like a whistle, like a freight train whistle from the wind. So, um, and like I said, right across the street from us, um, they did have some damage. Um, we had a couple pieces of siding fall off and then lost power. So absolutely nothing. I really do appreciate all of your thoughts. But um, anyways, I'm babbling on now. We are totally fine. We've got power back now. Um, I know the city of Bowling Green's putting um, everything back together. Aaron works in like the first responder field. So he's been um, the last couple days working on that, those things. And he's seen a lot of things. And it's just been scary and um you know but i just really think about everyone that lost their home like right before christmas it's so sad and just um yeah like you know it's a lot of people lost a lot of um a lot of things in a very short amount of time so um sorry the phone calls start right around the time i try to film a video before work so um the last thing i was gonna say is mayfield which is where the candle candleberry candle plant had collapsed and had that tragedy is about three hours from me so that was pretty far. um an f5 had come down through bowling green and it was kind of one of those things where like houses on the same street one was completely unaffected one was completely gone so you know those those things are so scary but anyways thank you guys for thinking of me and thank you guys for sending me well wishes and just checking with me that meant a lot to me we were completely fine the whole time um, but I'm not made for that life. So, um, I'm so thankful. Like I said, we lost, I went grocery shopping the night before because that's just what I do. So we lost all that, but that's not anything compared to, I, I mean, a few of my coworkers lost their home. So, um, you know, today for work, we're going to do Feeding America, which is, you know, I, that's the kind of stuff I like to do during this time of year anyway, but now our community needs it more than ever. So just like, you know, like I said, sending your positive thoughts and prayers. And if any of you are in the industries that help, thank you so much. Um, I know lots of electric um, utility companies have been sending crews because I think a hundred poles got ripped out of the ground. So we were very blessed to get our electricity on as quickly as we did, but I'm gonna stop there. I do have a really fun video that I had planned to share with you on Sunday and please go watch if it is up, the video I was trying to share with you over the weekend, but my internet just wasn't working. But um, I had some friend mail from Dawn Lee. Thank you so much again, Dawn. And then I shared some jewelry. I'm still wearing my jewelry pieces from Karativa. So today's video, after all of that, sorry, thanks for letting me just vent about it a little. It's hard because I didn't really get to talk to that many people about it. So, um, you know, like I said, I didn't want anyone to think I was being dramatic. I was just so worried about friends and family. Um, once I found out like, Aaron's parents live on the other side of Kentucky. They didn't have any storms, but um, 
and she works in like emergency management. So I was just worried about her. And then, like I said, some friends from work lost their homes and they're in hotels now or staying in the high school and, you know, um, right before Christmas is just so sad. So I appreciate y'all letting me talk about that. But today's video is another, what's their favorite candle? And of course we couldn't do Christmas without doing Home Alone. So I had to wear my Merry Christmas you filthy animal shirt just for this video and um a little bit about home alone like i said that is one of my favorite christmas movies it is my son's actual favorite christmas movie we start watching it december 1st and we watch it very regularly all the way through christmas he likes all four of them but obviously one and two are his favorite the movie home alone came out in 1990 um, it was actually released the day after my birthday in Chicago. So we went to see it, I remember, for my birthday. Uh, my birthday was November 9th, and this was released November 10th, 1990. So my eighth birthday, um, and I was, I'm from Northern Illinois originally. So like I live really near Chicago. I just remember that was so fun. And like that Macaulay Culkin, who plays Kevin McAllister, was eight years old and I was eight years old. So I remember just thinking like, whoa, what if this happened to me? Like, like it was a reality kind of a thing. It's kind of fun. So, um, yeah, my son's all-time favorite Christmas movie. And now the home where they filmed it, I've had so many friends that have gone there for little trips and things because it was, you know, pretty local, is an Airbnb you can rent for a night. And also um, Destin, I think, Rally? I'm not sure I say his last name. Who plays Buzz, who is Kevin's oldest brother, will give you like a night tour of like, and you know, talk about the set and stuff. So I think that's kind of fun. Like that would be such a fun thing to do. So we're gonna jump right in and I'm gonna start off with a candle for the movie. I don't do that every time, but some of these candles are gonna be pretty close. I laughed and some of them are gonna be kind of far off because again, I always have to pick from my own collection. So if I had access to every candle ever, um, you know, I would probably even have more spot on choices. But for the movie Home Alone, I had to share this. This is going to be, they get the candle holiday. And the reason is because I've always, this is like a Christmas movie for me. I, I think it's so interesting how, you know, Home Alone's a Christmas movie. And I only, I only like watch it at that time of year. Isn't that kind of interesting how we have movies that like only you watch at certain times of the year? Um, Holiday is red cinnamon stick, Christmas clove buds, and ground cinnamon, and it just smells like Christmas to me. So the movie got its own candle this time. And now we're going to start with Kevin, who is played by Macaulay Culkin. Um, in real life, he's actually a couple years older than me, but in the movie, he plays eight-year-old Kevin, who was being kind of cranky the night before their big family trip. So his mom tells him to go sleep up in the attic because he made everybody upset. And then they woke up in a panic and left forgot him and, you know, flew to France. So that's kind of the backstory. So for Kevin, of course, I, you know, I loved him already because he was an Uncle Buck. He was the little brother in Uncle Buck. I don't even remember his name, but um, my favorite line is where he's like, come on, I'm eating junk and watching rubbish or something to that nature. And so I wanted to give him a couple of candles, um, you know, him being the main character and all. I thought he did such a good job. It was such a cute movie. And there were so many things I wish I would have had something more related to, but I went ahead and gave Kevin cereal and cartoons. Um, this is Notes of Toasted Cinnamon, Crunchy Cereal, Ice Cold Milk. And if you recall, that morning he woke up like nothing was no big deal. Like he was not like worried that his family wasn't around. He just got up, started eating cereal. So. That was kind of why I thought this would be the perfect way to start the video with cereal and cartoons because it kind of reminds you of that part of the movie where he's like not panicked and you're like, buddy, your whole family's gone. Remember the 20 people in your house last night? Yeah, where are they at? And then, of course, another one which, um, you know, kind of fits but kind of doesn't, but I really wanted to incorporate it in this video was cookies and cream milkshake because he was just such a little like grown kid adult. So I thought this was kind of a fun one to throw in there too. This one smells so good. Chocolate cookie crumbles, vanilla bean ice cream, and chocolate drizzle. And this one's just because of all those meals he had to make himself. Remember that huge Sunday when he ordered the pizza and had the 
um, leave it at the door, and I, I, the old video playing in the background. Um, I just thought this was probably something he made himself for dinner now that he was on his own and independent in the movie. Now let's move on to Mom, um, played by Catherine O'Hara, which you guys know I love her from Schitt's Creek. I loved her in Beetlejuice. I love her. She plays Mom. She plays it so well. Um, and so I gave her two candles as well. Um, I just, I love all the scenes. She's such a strong comedic character, but she could play very serious roles too. But I decided to give her the first candle, A Thousand Wishes. I know it's kind of a strange pick, but sparkling champagne, crystal peony, and almond cream. It's such a beautiful, feminine, light, beautiful scent. Um, I chose this because I feel like throughout the movie, and as we are moms, we know we always wish for things to have gone differently. I wish that conversation with my child would have went differently. I wish I would have remembered the alarm. I wish as she's sitting on the bus with the Polko guys, I bet she was thinking a lot of wishes right then. But I just thought, you know, of this movie, the the moral of the story was how important family is and how important like second chances are and forgiveness. And so I just thought that somebody in this video des deserved this candle because it's beautiful, but also it's got a beautiful message too. Never fails. As soon as I start filming a video, I get a call. So the other candle that I thought of right away when I was thinking of mom, which is Kate McAllister from Home Alone, was the candle Welcome Home. So pretty much the whole movie, there's different plots. Like there's Kevin's story where he's like trying to stay safe from the burglars, which we're going to get to. And then there's the family story and they're stuck in Paris and they're feeling regretful for the way that they had, you know, their last conversation with Kevin in case that was their last conversation. And then there's Kate who's trying desperately to get home to her son through the whole movie and all that she goes through. So this one just felt very fitting. And this was cinnamon sugar, warm apple butter, clove butts, and brown sugar. Doesn't that just sound like something we would have for a family meal at this time of the year? It's really beautiful. I love the way the cinnamon and the apple butter kind of just, oh my gosh, it just opens up to such a delicious bakery gourmand scent. So that's the other one I had for mom. Not every character will get two candles, but um, let's move on to dad. So for dad was Peter McAllister and he was played by John Hurd and I loved him in um, Beaches. Do you remember he was in Beaches? I just love some of those uh, movie characters from the 80s and 90s. But for dad, I thought, you know, he's just like a real like macho dude like he's just the dad of the movie you know so like mom plays more of the like nurturing role dad's just like listen to your mom kind of a kind of dad I liked him in this one but because they're going to Paris and you know he's I remember he's like how am I gonna shave and she's like grow a goatee I wanted to give him a Paris themed candle so I went ahead and gave him Paris Cafe this is rich roasted coffee sugared brioche vanilla creme and with essential oils and we know this one just smells like coffee, but like coffee, like, you know, your powerhouse rich roasted coffee, not like a fancy drink from Starbucks. This is coffee. And so I'm assuming dad probably drank this, you know, he was a businessman, but, um, I also gave him a second one. I was thinking, you know, that's what he drinks during the day, but what would dad probably drink at night? And so this candle, I haven't got to feature a lot. So I'm bringing it out and this is the frosted Moscow mule. Um, this is, I mean, they're going on vacation after all. Sweet lime, lemon zest, and sugar cane. Oh, I love this candle. I really was hoping they'd bring this back for, um, candle day this year. This is my only one and I will not burn it until I have something to replace it with. Okay, so let's move into who gives this story the most comedic comedy relief. And that is going to be our characters of Marv and Harry played by Daniel Stern and Joe Pesci. So Daniel Stern was uh, Marv and he was, I guess, probably like, you know, if they were like pinky in the brain, he was pinky, but he was like the real funny, but kind of not as smart, not as crooked, you know, almost like gullible went along with it. So I tried to think about the end of the movie where, you know, they've been terrorizing the neighborhood and then Kevin strikes back, right? And so I, I was like, oh the little micro machines he steps on. And if I had like a candle with like a brick on it or a brick, he says something about suck bricks kid. And like then, you know, Kevin attacks or whatever. But um, I found this one 
And I'm going to actually end up using this candle um, for both, for two characters. This is Candy Bag. And I chose Candy Bag for one specific little character. Do you remember the part where the spider's crawling on his face and it was the big tarantula from, I think it was Buzz's room? It got out somehow and the shelves all collapsed. So you see that spider right there? I didn't have any other candles that had a spider on and I thought, you know, that was a pretty big part of the movie. This is a really awesome candle. Um, this is just like um, all the different elements of what you think you'd smell if you opened a big bag of trick-or-treat candy. And since they always carried a bag full of other people's loot as they burglarized houses, I thought that kind of made sense. So even though it's a Halloween candle, kind of had a multi-purpose use for it. So when I thought of Joe Pesci, the scene that everybody probably remembers um, was when he, uh, I don't remember what little ninja thing uh, Kevin had set up, but he burns his hair off. And I'm going to insert a picture because I no longer have this candle, but it was a really, it was a first thing that came to mind and it was Flamingo Beach because when I lit that candle, it smelled like a burning perm porter potty situation, which I'm pretty sure is what it smelled like as that flame was like melting his hat to his head, remember? But also, just since I wanted to have a candle actually in my collection currently, I went with ice cream bar because I thought of, this looks like the little um, van they were driving around that ritzy neighborhood. And I'm like, how come no one, I mean, if everyone truly wasn't home for the holidays, how come no one didn't see that van and like call the real police? Um, but yeah, also they probably played that character at some point trying to trick people. He went into the house originally as a police officer, but maybe at some point they were, you know, creepy ice cream van people. But this one I don't get to feature very often either. It's chocolate wafer, vanilla ice cream, and graham cracker crunch. Super yummy. So those are the candles that I give to Marvin Harry. Now let's move into... Uncle Frank. Remember Uncle Frank? He was the, uh, put the silverware in your purse, Leslie, and, uh, something, beat at you a little jerk or something. Like, he was, like, the very unfriendly uncle, always kind of schmoozing off the rest of his family, but for me, he always looked like Walter, which is that little puppet that the one, uh, Belen or is it Belentriquist? does I don't know so I went right away with this one this was the first candle that came to mind for me sweater weather this has notes of sage juniper berry aromatic eucalyptus and fresh woods and he just always had that like sweater vest situation going on so that's the first candle I thought of for Uncle Frank Uncle Frank was uh, played by Jerry Bamman and I didn't really know him from anything else but I really liked him in the second um Home Alone as well where he was like singing in the shower and Kevin catches them on that little camera because like when, when that movie came out we all wanted one of those little like recorder cameras to like get our families with. Okay so then I can't forget Gus Polinski played by John Candy and he was the Polka King and he is the only main character that never interacted with Kevin. He was the one um, with the Kenosha Kickers and they were getting like a budget van and they offered Kate McAllister played by um, Catherine O'Hare to come back with them so she could get home to Chicago to Kevin. So he played a really funny role, but I really couldn't think of any candles I had for him. So again, we're sharing this candle. And since he's John Candy, I gave him candy. So he's John Candy Bag, the candle, get it? But again, this one's just a really beautiful, like fruity, candy, powder sugar candle. And I just thought that kind of worked because I really wanted to include him. He was a part of the movie. The last characters I wanted to include were all the kids in the movie. Um, so I tried to get as many as I could. Um, we'll go with Buzz, which my favorite line about him is, Buzz, your girlfriend, woof. I have a shirt that says that too. I really did love this movie. And so for Buzz, I gave him Varsity Jacket. This one just kind of smells like a men's cologne with a little mix of that like benzoin in it. And then Lenny, his sister, she had a line that I used a lot as a child and um, she's like, Kevin, you're what the French would call les incompetents, which isn't the correct pronunciation. But for her and her know-it-all attitude, I gave her the France. This is from Goose Creek. Mar uh, marshmallow macaron. It's just really pretty. It smells like fruity and then like a little bit of like a cakey. I really like it. And then for 
um, Fuller. I didn't have a Pepsi candle, but remember the lay off the Pepsi Fuller because that was something I think I said to like every child younger than me after that movie. So we're giving him pineapple punch because our pink apple punch. He shouldn't be drinking any liquids at night. And I think we probably all have that cousin that stayed over that shouldn't be drinking any liquids after a certain time. This one smells really good. It's crisp apple, sun-kissed melon, and sugar crystal. And it was just the lay off the liquids fuller. So I had to give him a liquid themed let candle. Let me know down below if you guys loved Home Alone and let me know how you think I did. Again, I know some of these fit pretty good and some of them are a little stretched, but it's still fun to talk about movies. I love movies, love pop culture. Like I said, you'll always see me wearing silly shirts like this because it's just my thing. But um, yeah, I just really um, appreciate y'all watching. Thanks for all your thoughts. And like I said, you know, just checking in, it meant a lot. We were okay. And I just figured I would catch up on Vlogmas once I was able to film. So um, now I'm kind of rusty. I got to get back into the swing of things, but I really appreciate you all. And let me know down below. I have a couple, like two or three more Christmas movies coming. So these will just be coming out rapid fire because I got a few days behind, but I had to start with Home Alone because it's my son's favorite Christmas movie. And he had fun watching the movie as I did this little research for the video. So anyways, thank you guys so much. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.